Hi everyone, we are the Karen team. I am Professor Ng, specialized in architecture and urban design. Hi everyone, my name is Ellie Jotiva and I'm a visual artist and researcher specializing in machine vision that happens at the intersection of art and science. Hi, my name is Yanzi and I'm specialized in filmmaking, visual effects and animation. Hi, my name is Artyom Pinovsky and I'm data analyst. Our project Current is a speculative urbanism project that discusses the future of broadcasting cinema and its impact on our cities. But for the purposes of this conference, we will discuss specifically its use as a platform for Urban Archive. We will also introduce the proposed production pipeline from experimenting firsthand with a range of emerging technologies. So why is Urban Archiving important? The quality of our built environment is often assessed through records of data and history. Yet, traditional architectural archives mainly include drawings and models of buildings for its operational costs that guarantees the value of an object. This does not give a comprehensive overview of the qualities and impact of a design relative to its larger system. The advancement of digital technologies expands the possibilities of archiving and democratize it into a real-time, responsive, multi-access system. One of the challenges for urban archiving is an abundance of data with no simple and economic way to structure and extract useful information. For instance, livestream data from media platforms often consist of information about our built environment and its events. But such an infinite scroll of image and video data running on 30 frames per second presents immense challenges for predictive analysis. Along these lines, emerging tools such as volumetric navigation, AI image processing, and algorithmic personalization may assist us in collaborative information operations, such as indexing, analyzing, filtering, ranking, and synthesizing collectively. So in the research, we have referenced various initiatives in their approach to urban archive and event reconstruction, including InTouch Review, which renders 3D video captured by a football field of cameras in near real time to reconstruct sporting events. Forensic Architecture, which investigates violence and terrorism using social media data. Zena, which preserved virtually a demolished historical site and its occupants in Tel Aviv. Provoked by these works, Karen focuses on democratizing reconstruction techniques to facilitate a collective contribution to urban archives. Instead of using high-end technologies and softwares that are mostly available to institutions and corporates, Karen tested a range of lower-end sensors like mobile phones, Kinect, motion sensing, drones, open-source neural networks, photogrammetry frameworks, and so on, that are all readily available to any architects or individuals. So the aim is to formulate a platform that allows individuals to collectively gather and process data in real time. This is the production pipeline that we are proposing. This pipeline enables individual users to simultaneously produce, broadcast, and acquire information through livestream. Livestream includes image and metadata like GPS, timestamps, which can be extracted for environment reconstruction. With machine learning, you can have estimation on what is behind a foregrounded object so that it's perfect to be coupled with photogrammetry frameworks that calculate based on vantage points. The output volumetric data will then be archived and plugged into personalization algorithms, which will label, rank, and deliver recommended content to AI image processing by collaborative filtering. For instance, we experimented with autoencoder, which can help to fill in missing information on texture maps based on archived data. And object detection can help to estimate scene descriptions. Finally, the output will be sent to volumetric navigation engines like VR devices and accessed by a network of users. As such, the system forms a feedback loop, which basically helps to reconstruct 3D environments based on multiple vantage points from sequences of 2D images. The ability to reconstruct events from multiple vantage points can bring us closer in our search for objective truth of contested events. This is of vital importance within our fake news media climates. Live streams collected from non-human sources can offer us alternative perspectives to take into consideration when we are choosing what to believe in. We propose that the authentication of truth from a collective array of varied sources, like reconstructing events from all scales and vantage points from satellite views of the earth through self-driving car streams to live cams on the bottom of the ocean. 
In this way, Current imagines the possibility of combining all of these sources into one stream that's optimized through artificial intelligence and personalized for each user's information query and needs. How can the incorporation of non-human vantage points really begin to change our own positions to and our relationships with our environments? It's important to note that the reconstruction process, although precise in the output phase, often lacks all the necessary information of different vantage points at the input phase. This, of course, produces various information gaps that need to be filled. And we know that AI is inventive. We saw, for example, how the Microsoft Flight Simulator turned the Buckingham Palace into a generic 90s office block. So there's still a long way to go before we can see real-time reconstructions of all possible events on an urban level. However, if we think of simulation as a machine's imagination, what possibilities are offered when it's paired with human imagination? See, in this transition period, during which AI is still learning, current fills in the spatial and temporal gaps of information with human imagination and hopes to empower each user's own capabilities to guide these algorithmic reconstructions in ways that incorporate more diverse values and more importantly, grow our human ability to imagine new places and potentials. A year ago, when we were presenting current at Strelka Institute, uh, we could barely imagine that just a year later, such system will start to operate in the real world. As mentioned before, systems like Intel TrueView um, allow you to see the live stream in three dimensions, so you can examine events from every point of view. For, for example, if it's football, you no longer need a judge in the field. This situation produces uh, new types of seeing and navigation, changes the approach for truth authentication. The shift from 2D to 3D space changes the way we think, the way we perceive. One of the best examples to understand this difference is to try to watch conventional movie in VR. First, what you notice is this disruption between the shots, I mean, montage cuts. When you are in a 3D space, it will look like a whole world around you just changed in millisecond. So the virtual environment demands a new level of continuity, let's say, undisruptive media. That's why our film was made as just one shot. Uh, and we see this as a trend not only in filmmaking, but on a more abstract level in interfaces, uh, in native advertisement, in infinite scroll feeds, and even on a more ground fundamental level, shift from CPU to GPU calculations, let's say integer to float, and from convenient algorithmic uh, processing to narrowness. Second big thing to add to this salad uh, is real-time simulations. Microsoft Flight Simula Simulator, for example, proves our point that such huge information systems can stream simulation in the real time, allowing access to every point on Earth reconstructed in 3D from satellite data with weather conditions synced with forecast servers, and all this just running on your laptop. So this leads us to the questions, what if that kind of system together can operate on the city scale with real sensing data? And how will it impact architecture and approaches for city planning? Which new types of places or non-places it will produce? Current urban archive can gather information from different sources, from static CCTV cameras to dash cams and to smart perimetric sensors. And one can participate in the reconstruction of urban scenes. This reconstructed data can be used in many ways. As for me, there's two interesting approaches. First is to use this data as a source of examples for machine learning tasks, like teaching driverless cars or autonomous bots to navigate through the city. By analyzing all the data sources, we can understand how different actors are moving in urban environment. I mean, not only finding and predicting patterns of movement, but also creating behavior models and more complicated things, like teaching machines to understand the laws of physics. This knowledge may give us much more detailed uh, description of environment. So current archive helped to review the past to understand how things work and to predict possible futures of what can happen in the city. The second thing is a study of volumetric filmmaking. The idea that we can break linearity of cinematic narrative and make it not only time but also spatially distributed multi-branch narrative seems to me the next step of cinematic language. 
Just imagine you can marry cinematic approaches with uh, video game world building techniques to create uh, stories that are intertwined into city canvas. We can make different events to be happening in different parts of the city simultaneously and let our viewers to decide which branch of the story they want to see this time or help them and adjust the plot according to what they usually prefer to watch. This can be done with sim understanding and recommendation algorithms. Another way to personalize the movie is to use uh, generative adversarial networks to replace main characters to the viewers' faces with deepfake algorithms or generate absolutely new actors randomly or based on viewers' preferences. Also, with the use of 3D semantic segmentation, we can reveal uh, all actors and uh, details of the scene and then watch this scene with the eyes of any character we want, human or non-human. So we have a demo as a 12-minute polymetric cinema that illustrates not just what the system can output, but how such system may look and feel like for the future of our cities. For anyone who is interested, please feel free to visit our website, current.cam. So this is our team. We're based around the world. Thank you so much for your attention.